thinking. Did you ever wonder why group work can be so frustrating? Well, it's one thing when you're playing uh, a team-based game like, like that. But uh, when it comes to schoolwork, it can be even more frustrating because obviously there's a lot more online, on the line. So why is group work so frustrating anyway? Why is it so difficult for us to get things going when it comes time to do group work? Well, there's a number of reasons for that. And so I just kind of want to go over a few of them, but also think about what you can do about it to uh, make the situation better or you know even from the get-go like what you can do to make sure that uh, you're setting up you and your group are setting up uh, the conditions for a successful group project all right so why is collaborating so difficult to begin with well there can be a number of reasons uh, especially all these days uh, scheduling conflicts for one thing in a class like this, you've got a number of people at different levels, different situations. We've got seniors through sophomores and everything in between. And so there's a lot going on. So and not to mention we, jobs and family and social life and all these other things come into play. So scheduling can become extremely difficult. Yes, this gets a lot better in the workplace when everyone's uh, assumedly on the same schedule. But, you know, in... in at the college level, there are a lot of different schedules conflicting. And so that's one reason. Another reason is we all have different paces of work. You know, with those schedules, we sometimes we can only get to things at the last minute. Some of us are just uh, acclimated to that. Some of us, <coughs> for better or for worse, that's how we work. Others like to start things right away. Some people like to turn things in early. So there's a lot of different work styles going on. And when you're getting into a group, especially for a class, you know, there are different paces of work. There are different, um, you know, some people like to, you know, work a little bit at a time. Uh, like I said, it, so it, it, here's an, another reason why group work can be difficult, just those different paces that we work at. And finally, uh, we're used to working alone. Uh, usually by the time group work uh, and collaboration is something that is rare. Um, and, you know, for that reason, it's, it's really awkward and cumbersome and frustrating because we're simply not used to it. Uh, we off, when we work alone, we know our own pace, we know our schedule, so we can anticipate what sort of obstacles. But when we're doing, the, you know, we're dealing with a, a group, you know, a lot of times we're working with strangers, especially in the classroom situation. Um, we don't know everyone's schedules and we're not familiar with everyone's pace of work. Um, so there, there are just three simple problems that I can think of off the top of my head. But so uh, other reasons when we start getting into more details, when we're actually in the group, things can get really uh, tense uh, due to a number of factors. One is lack of communication. If we're just not, uh, you know, not just reaching out, but responding, you know, when we're not responding and someone reaches out and uh, again, sometimes it, it's frustrating because if, if someone, one or two or a few people have gone uh, AWOL, it's hard to get things going. We, we don't know what the situation is, what the expectation, you know, what sort of, what can we expect from people who aren't responding to emails? Uh, this can also be, this can be interpreted as a lack of engagement. If we're not if we don't know uh, who we're working with, it's hard to really understand what sort of level of engagement and commitment that that person is going to give to this class, and, and that can be frustrating too, especially for those who like to work ahead, who are you know maybe seniors. Uh, who are trying to get acclimated to, you know, who are used to working hard and they know what the expectations are, they know what's at stake, uh, and they're pretty comfortable with their own work pace. Uh, it can be frustrating to, to uh, be collaborating with people who aren't quite there yet. 
Uh, there can also be a lack of understanding. You know, maybe not everyone in the group un has a clear understanding of what an assignment is or what the task is. Uh, so that can lead to more frustration. Uh, but there's also a lack of direction. When we don't have a clear understanding of what we're being asked to do, uh, that can lead to people going in different directions. And this can be a real problem, especially at this stage with this class. There are a number of different things. You, you have an assignment that you're supposed to do uh, and collaborate on, um, and maybe you're finding yourselves being pulled in, in several different directions. And that can be frustrating as well. But I would say the number one reason for uh, group work, groups to kind of fall apart or become frustrating is simply a lack of trust. When all of these things combine, uh, it really comes down to a lack of trust with one another. And, and I also want to clarify that, though. It's not so much that we don't trust people. We also just don't know them. We're not comfortable with other people in the group. So when, we're t when I say lack of trust, it's more of a, it's not that trust has been lost. It's that trust hasn't been uh, developed yet. And so that's one of the reasons we do things like postmortems and debriefings and, and previews and really start to build communication and start to build the fundamentals. A lot of you, as you well know, a lot of your group, you know, you might be in a group that's not really there yet. Um, that's very common. Um, our goal with this class is to really understand how these sort of dynamics work. Again, uh, thinking back to the syllabus, this is one of the primary goals of this class uh, is to start building intrapersonal uh, communication and really start to recognize some of these dynamics when we're doing collaboration because this is a desperately needed skill, um, probably more so than technical communications to be to be perfectly honest. Um, writing, writing technical reports, I would say, is a far cry from you know, really good collaborative skills. So what can we do about it? This, this, and this is the golden question. Here's something that was told to me once a long time ago. When, especially when we're starting a new job, we're eager, um, or if we are a senior in college and we're, we got one foot out the door, or we're just, you know, we, we like to, to get the job done quickly. What happens, you know, the, what happens is that you, you set a precedent. And I was once told this by a boss of mine because I was working ahead and trying to get a lot of things done. And the, what happens is, is that your coworkers or the people that you're collaborating with, knowingly or not, come to rely on you to be the person who's going to get the job done or is going to work ahead. And it creates a pace or an environment that is not conducive to collaborating. Uh, if, if, you know, and again, this is not to say that the people who are responding this way are lazy. That, that's usually not the case. But it's usually that, well, if, someone, if someone's going to do this, if they're going to take that first step and they're going to, you know, they're going to really jump in, then there's really not a lot of room to uh, collaborate. Um, because as, as uh, frustrating as it is to work with people who are non-communicative or not responsive or not committed to the work, it can also be frustrating to work with people who are working a, a week ahead of time or, or taking those extra steps because if, especially if I'm a person who's not there, if I'm still trying to get this, if I don't understand the task or I, you know, there's a lot of things going on, it can cause me to back up. If I have obligations or if I know I have a tight schedule and I just can't put that level of commitment in, um, it's, it's going to be hard for me to attain that level of standards that that person uh, set, that, that bar was set pretty high. And I'm going to, you know, the, the, a common human response is to just sort of back away and say, well, I, I just don't, I don't fit. I don't fit in this group. So the next, one of the most important things that leads me to the next important thing, and this is usually the big one, is um, improving communication. Especially as we're starting to find, uh, trying to figure out where everyone's at and what everyone's work is. Um, pace is like or what their working conditions are like, uh, it's really important to keep that communication going. If it's not working, you have to make it better. Uh, and this is one of those things that I, as an instructor, I don't 
tell people how to communicate with one another because you all have a better idea of what your uh, select, you know, Discord, Teams, Slack, uh, email, uh, messaging, uh, God forbid Facebook Messenger, but I know for whatever reason some people still like using it. Anyway, what is the preferred method of communication? You have to figure this out as soon as possible. And it usually does take some time. It usually takes a few mistakes. Um, I, don't, I, I know I've, I'll be honest, I've missed several events and meetings because it was conducted on Facebook Messenger and I just, I don't check that often enough. So the, once you start getting the communication built, the next, and this is a really important step, and this will save a lot of frustration, um, especially when it comes to work pace, is assigning roles. Who's going to do what? So when we're talking about our for this assignment, the technical report, there are a lot of different parts. There are a lot of different sections that each person can take up. And, and we're talking about a 10 to 12 page paper, but when everyone takes on duties and roles and understands the expectations, you're talking about two to three pages each, right? So it's really important to figure out who's doing what once you understand what the assignment is. So this is a good time to reach out, start communicating, figure out a time that you can all meet uh, for about 15 minutes, half an hour, and figure out who's doing what. Okay, what section is, is gonna be done? What, who's gonna be responsible for each? I strongly, I strongly encourage each group to find one person to uh, either lighten the, the writing load. I usually like to, usually the seniors I can pick on for this because they usually, especially in uh, engineering, computer science, et cetera, they have a lot going on. Um, I usually have that person be responsible for checking everything, proofreading, making sure it is tight, the language is solid, and make sure that thing is submitted. Um, that person can, you know, especially for those who like to set that precedent and work ahead, you know, this could be a good role for them, you know, like a project manager, if you will. But then also make sure you're holding each other accountable. And this is something that we often don't do in, uh, it's, it can be very difficult to do in a classroom environment. Certainly if in a job situation, it becomes very, you know, you could get fired. You could lose money to the tune of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, depending on the project you're working on. Accountability is really important. Well, how do we do this in a classroom situation? Well, uh, I'll tell you, I've seen situations where the person who doesn't uh, show up and kind of bails, uh, they get dumped on. Um, they get they get held responsible for certain parts that they might, might not be aware of. And you know, in this environment, when a situation happens like that, as the instructor, I'm not going to fault the group for one person, you know, falling through. But you know, other I've other I've seen groups also. Uh, write contracts out if, if any person in this group fails to perform up to you know these expectations gets their, they're out they'll find another group and i am more than happy to work with any group i've done that before um and it, so you can see there's a number of different it, this can be challenging especially when it comes to holding each other accountable but believe it or not that works a lot better than uh, grades for some people so but also on the other hand, also be forgiving. And this is something, especially these days, we're all trying to get a little bit better at. As much as we wanna hold each other accountable, be forgiving, be sympathetic when things happen and, and things are happening to everyone, I, you know, especially with a pandemic going on. Uh, be understanding, give me a shout, tell me you need some extra time. I, I will do my part to do that, but you all have to do that as well and, and help each other and support each other to make sure that, that the job gets done. And one of the things we'll do in class, uh, we've done it a couple times now with these post-mortems, is once we're done, we will also review. You've got your pre-mortem done, we're gonna go back to that. And so, you know, were we successful? We, we've sort of set some standards and parameters that we wanna abide by. Did we do it? Did we figure out a better uh, mode of communication? These are the things that we do in class and why we do the postmortems and several of them in class because this is really the important part and, and 
Uh, the postmortem is one of the reasons that it's an industry standard is because this is fundamental in building trust within a group and from there collaboration really starts to take off.